series, I always do an introduction to these Q&As, and the only questions, the Bible says avoid foolish and unlearned questions, but the measuring stick for a foolish and unlearned questions is, is the intention of it is you're trying to go in and stir up trouble. Right. And, uh, you know, like, uh, whatever. I'm not going to even suggest a question because it's like some trouble. But, you know, basically, I'll, before I address these, I'll, I'll, I'll give some consideration to that. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a question asked um, that it might offend you because everybody's got something that we might be offended by, you know. Uh, um, but if you find that, you know, there's a question is offensive, then maybe there's something there that we need to work out with the Lord. Certainly, I need to be aware of it, so I don't do that. But I always say this, if I step on anybody's toes with a question, I wasn't aiming for the toes, I was aiming for the heart. So, <laughs> so uh, if, I, if I miss and I'm a bad shot, uh, just let me know. I'll try and keep from shooting you, shooting you again. Uh, but these are the questions that have come in. Today's questions... Uh, are related to a group of questions that we had at the beginning, which was asking questions about life and death and, you know, what does it mean to be a human being? Paul talked about a body and a soul and a spirit. So two weeks ago, we, we kind of touched on, you know, what those parts of a human being are. And, uh, uh, and then we switched over to, to death, which was last, uh, last week. And, uh, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that people point to about what happens to you when you die. But uh, the, the, the main emphasis of last week was the scripture that says, It is appointed unto once to die, and then the judgment. And there's nothing in between. If, you, if, you, if you're not being judged when you're resurrected, you're on your way to being judged. Uh, you know, we, we have a rapture, and uh, those that take part in the first resurrection, the second death had no power on them. Well, when the rapture happens and the living are changed and the dead in Christ rise, we're on our way to judgment. We're on our way to the judgment seat of Christ. That was appointed a man once to die and then the judgment. And so, you know, if you think something happens in between, some, some folks believe you, you know, go around and uh, uh, will come back and haunt your friends and and your enemies, and uh, or you'll end up in purgatory, or Abraham's bosom, or whatever, is appointed a once man once to die, and then the judgment. So those other things, I'm not saying are right or wrong, but they don't happen in between the time you die and the judgment. Just just a resurrection happens, and then then the judgment. So uh, so we we touched on life, and I'm going to call that first sermon life part one. And then we talked about death. And now we're swinging back around to life part two. Um, and this was some questions that were related to this topic that didn't quite fit uh, in the first sermon or, or time allowed uh, was, a, was a big part about it. Because these are very deep and intense questions. But uh, the questions today uh, that we'll look at that are related to life before we move off of the life and death topics uh, uh, someone asked the question, how is a human different from other living or breathing creatures? So, so uh, Doug, you've got, you've got a dog, you've, you've had dogs, I've had dogs. Are you cat or dog people or, or neither? We, we have dogs. You have dogs, okay. Yeah. What's their names? I didn't know this. Chip. Huh. I, I almost said CJ. Uh, I'm, I'm so used to saying Chip, CJ, and Chloe. Uh, CJ passed away a year ago. Uh, but Chip, Chloe, and Creel, they're all C's. Okay. Uh -huh. well, I, did, I did not. What kind of movies are they? They're all mutts. Chip was, oh, <laughs> yeah, we have two bigs. They're about 60 pounds each, fluffy dogs. And then uh, Chloe is a Chihuahua mix. She's Chip, Chip was a shelter dog. The other two we kind of rescued because they Did needed out of their situation. They needed rescued. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> My, uh, my dogs were uh, both rescues, the, my, my two most recent dogs. I grew up around chihuahuas. My mom uh, just happened to get, us, get, get chihuahuas when we were young. And my grandparents had chihuahuas. Uh, 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 and then uh, we had a child with chihuahuas when we were older. My uh, uh, Sheila's, dad had, uh, Sheila's dad had a chihuahua. And uh, so we've had a lot of chihuahuas in our uh, 
uh, in our life. And then dogs, you know, earlier on when I was a kid, so uh, lots of dog, dog family. And uh, okay, so you know what? The animals are just precious. I mean, they become part of the family. I, I know when my uh, uh, when my mom's when Sheila's dad, the first Chihuahua he had when uh, we got married was run over by a car on uh, 4th of July that he got scared of the fireworks and took off. It terrible. And uh, it was terrible. And I just, I had to get on the lawnmower and just mow because I needed to be alone for a while and I just, I just bawled. The I first time bawled. Pastor and I ever sat on the driveway in the back of his vehicle, we both sat down there and cried like babies. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Now that I look back on it, it was good healing for both of us. Yeah. Holy moly. But, uh, we, just, we get so attached to them, yeah. and uh, you know we want we want to believe you know that uh, uh, things about them. But you know what does the Bible have to say about what's the difference uh, between a person and an animal? Uh, Sheila's dad was he took it kind of a little bit farther than I would. Every morning he'd make coffee, and the little dog would sit up on his shoulder. And he'd take a sip, and she'd take a sip. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little far for me, yeah, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I know for a fact that the poor dog, um, she uh, developed Alzheimer's. I know that for a fact because she got to where she didn't know us, and then just after one, you know, once in a while she'd come back, and then she'd know us again, and then right back to, you know, back to it. So I mean, they go through some of the same conditions that we go through, and uh, you know, I believe there's genuine love uh, there and everything. So. So, but how are they different? What's the Bible say about that? And I think that we might actually see some surprises there. Uh, the second question uh, uh, was a very short one. This could be a very long topic, but there is some kind of overlapping scriptures uh, that we're going to use for both these questions. So this was just a very brief one. When is life acceptable to terminate in an abortion? And so uh, we're not going to talk just very briefly about that one, but there's a scripture that touches on it here. So uh, we got four scriptures today. There's four, four of us that I'm looking at here. Who, who would like to do some reading on today? Anybody, anybody else? Okay, everybody's going to take one. All right. So the first one is Ecclesiastes uh, chapter three, eighteen to twenty-one. Who wants to do the first one? All right, go ahead, Doug. It says, "I said in my heart, with regard to human beings, that God has tested them to show that they are but animals." <clears throat> For the fate of the human and the fate of the animals is the same. As one dies, so does the other. They all have the same breath, humans, and, no, and have no advantage over the animals. For all is vanity. All go to one place, all are from dust, and all turn dust again. Who knows whether the human spirit goes upward and the spirit of the animal goes downward to the earth. Interesting, isn't it, some things that are in the scripture. Um, um, do what? I said there was a question, a question really got, who knows? Yeah, who knows? So here, here is Solomon and uh, Ecclesiastes is is uh, the sum of Solomon's wisdom. You know, he prayed uh, to God, and God said uh, that He would give him any one thing He wanted. And He says, He says, I feel like a child, and I want to be wise so that I can rule my kingdom. And He said, God just was so impressed by that choice that He says, I'm not only going to give you wisdom, I'm going to give you riches and honor, and and He was uh, the Bible calls the wisest person who ever lived and God blessed him and that was began to be shown immediately in the way he, he ruled his kingdom and so on uh, but Ecclesiastes is a book that uh, has has the his musings his writings the thoughts of his heart and, and he would he would do experiments in life and then observe to see what would happen so uh, you know at, at one point in time he would he would look to see what other people would do, and then he would do experiments where he said, yeah, you know, I would indulge in wine and women and song and mirth, and, and it was like, man, that was a 
trip, but then at the end it's like, yeah, that was that was that was bad. He could use the word vanity when he says this, but all is vanity. There's just nothing to it. Uh, uh, and uh, he'd say, then I would undertake big projects, and I try to build houses and 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 you know direct the flow of water, which I guess was talking about canals or aqueducts or something like that. He was taking up all these projects, and then he'd say, and then I look at it, it was like, well, yeah, that's awesome. But that's vanity too. It's like. You know, and in conclusion, basically, his he, he, he concluded that just leading a simple life and serving the Lord and just enjoying the fruits of your labor, you work hard and you get the paycheck and then you enjoy that, that that's basically the best thing you can you can find in life. And and to undertake big projects or, or whatever, there's just there's there's a lot of um, meaningless stuff that goes along with with life in this world. Um, you know, we know that sin is pleasure for a season, but then after you face the consequences of that. So, so this is the kind of things that he that he dealt with. So at this point in in his writing, he is looking at the fate of animals and mankind. He's trying to figure out, you know, what makes man so special and so different from animals. If you talk to someone in the scientific community, uh, science views the human being as basically just a, a more advanced animal. And, and, you know, if you're coming at this thing from a, an atheist perspective, you have no reason to think that a human being is any different than anything else. Um, and so, you know, here is Solomon now. He's grappling with the same question, and he's trying to figure this thing out. And so what he observes is that it's that basically, you know, humans, we do so many things. We use our brains. We build things. We do all that. We, we accumulate wealth. We get rich, whatever. But then, in the end, we die. And whatever we've accumulated, there's no scripture in the Bible that says we don't know when we pass on, you know, an inheritance to our children. We don't know if they're going to use it with wisdom or if they're going to be fools with it. You know, you just have no way of knowing and 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 at the end of the at the end of life, basically we all face the grave. And this, he says, is no different than the animals. So comparing the two, he says, you know, there's really no advantage to being a human being versus being an animal over over life because we both are dust and we both return to dust. Our bodies are that way. And, you know, you talk to a lot of dog owners, and they'll tell you, you know, well, what sets us apart from an animal? Well, you know, an animal has feelings. Uh, uh, smart animals use their brains and, you know, do things. A dog is, is well, my dog was dumb as a stump. But, <laughs> but there's some dogs that are just geniuses uh, when, you know, it comes to that. I, I saw this video once about a, about a dog, and he, his vocabulary was about a thousand words. You could tell him, you know, to go in the next room and find a stuffed rabbit, and he would bring back the rabbit, not the bear, not the stuffed, you know, giraffe or whatever. He'd bring back the right thing. Very smart uh, uh, dog. Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse, uh, selected verses start with 20. Who's going to be my next one? You're going to read it? Okay, go ahead. And God said, Let the water spring forth abundantly, and the moving creature that hath life, and the fowl that may fly above the earth, and the open firmament. Yeah, firmament. firmament. Yes, firmament of heaven. <coughs> and God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly, after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and the beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female, he created them. Okay, so we're talking about what is the difference and the similarities between mankind and the animals? That was the question that was asked. How are we different? 
And so this scripture talks about the creation of the animals that we know, the, the, the birds, the land-dwelling animals, and the sea creatures that we're familiar with, and about man. Now there's a, there's a word that is repeated, it's, it's written a, a total of three times, kind of right at the beginning of the verse. Somebody tell me who, what the repeated word is in these passages. And God said. God said. Said is a spoken command. God said. So keep that in mind. That is something that is common in all three of these things. All right. Now, God was speaking, but he wasn't just speaking into the air. He was issuing a command, or he was speaking something into being, and he was directing that at something. So tell me, when he was <coughs> directing the command that the sea life should come into existence, what was he speaking? What, he said something. What was he speaking to? When he was talking about when he created the fish, the fowls of the air, he spoke to something. Anybody want to venture a guess on that one? Angels. No. Good guess, though. Good guess. It says it right there. It says, And God said, Let the waters. He said, Water bring forth this life. He was speaking to the water. Alright? Then he spoke to the earth. And then he spoke to the earth. When he wanted to create the land-dwelling creatures, he spoke to the earth. So there's a difference. So there's a difference between there's everything that he, is common between the three is he said something. But then he spoke to the water and then he spoke to the land when he was creating the sea creatures and the land creatures. Now, when he was creating man, he said, but who did he say to? Who was he talking to? Let us make man. He was talking to himself. Let us make man in our earth. What were you going to say, Miranda? Our word. It says, let us make man in our our image, Which, yeah. Th that's not, is that speaking of himself? Or to me, our is multiple. Yeah, yeah the, Trinity. the Trinity. Yeah, the Trinity. Yeah. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were all there. The This is one of the little bit of Hebrew I, I think I know is the, when it's, you, when, when, he, when, when God said, in these cases, God is actually plural. It's the word Elohim, which is a plural word. So, uh, let us make man in our image. So God said in all three cases, but he spoke two different things. Okay, so think about this for a minute. What makes us different from the animals is, is this. Understand this principle. When God, when God is making something, he makes it by speaking. He sends forth the word. Nothing was made that wasn't made by the Word. That's John chapter 1. But he speaks, and what he wants it to be made out of, he speaks to that thing, and what he is making comes out of the thing he spoke to. So when he made the fish and the, and the fowl, he spoke to the water, and they came out of the water. That's where the that's what they're made out of, is the substance that's in the water. When he spoke to the, sea, uh, to, the, to the land, the animals came out of the land. What he wanted them to be made out of is what he spoke to, and they came out of the land. When he spoke to himself, it says he breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life. So he didn't do that to the fish. He didn't do that to the fowl. And he didn't do that to the animals. We have something in common. We talked about this two weeks ago. Is DNA. And everything that is alive has DNA in it. We're all made. Our bodies are made of that substance. But the spirit that charges us and makes us alive. There is the spirit that's in the earth. And there's the spirit that is from God. 
So there, uh, Doug, you, you pointed out that Solomon was posing the question. He says, who knows whether the human spirit goes upward and the spirit of animals goes downward into the earth. He's contemplating. I'm not really sure about that. But, but in Genesis, if the animals came out of the water when they die, they're, everything that, is, that, that the animals is goes back into the water or goes back into the land. Their spirit goes downward. It's a different kind of spirit. Now, it says they all have the same breath, but that just means that we all, you know, uh, have, have, have life in us and we're all living and breathing organisms. But when we're talking about the spirit, that is the life-giving force, Solomon was contemplating it, but he didn't really say it specifically. But that was kind of the working idea, was the spirit of animals goes back to the ground, but the spirit of man goes upward. Well, there's another passage later on in Ecclesiastes where he gets a little more definitive. So that's our third passage. Just two verses, 1 and 7, Ecclesiastes 12. Who's, who's got that one? Go ahead, Bob. Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near in which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. Okay, so he's come to the conclusion that with man, our bodies did come from the ground. And we know from Genesis that God formed man's body from the dust of the ground. And so he says, the dust returns to the earth. But then that part of the human being, God's spirit that he breathed into his nostrils, that part is from God. And so that part goes back to God when it's done. When we're, when we're, when we're dead and we're no longer using it, that part returns to God. So where something came from is where it goes back to when it's done. I'm sure there's some scientists out there that would agree with that, a conservation of mass and energy and spirit or whatever, anyways. Can be created, can't be destroyed, it just recycled. Well, when we're done with it, where it came from, it goes back to the place where it came from. The body goes back to the ground. In the case of the animals, it goes back into the earth, their spirit. Our spirit goes back to God who gave it. So Ecclesiastes, we jump from chapter 3 to chapter 12. At first he says, now who can say this? But later on he came to the conclusion that the spirit returns to God who gave it. So what's the difference between a man and an animal? And that is the life-giving force that we have came from a different place. Our life-giving force came from God and it goes back to God. So there is a difference in us. Now, the soul was something else. Um, and the soul, what we talked about two weeks ago, is it's, it's kind of tied to our DNA. It kind of originates from there, but it's a little bit more than that. You know, you can, your DNA can tell you that you know, you're going to have red hair or you're going to have freckles or you're going to have a, a certain pigment of skin color or whatever and it can also kind of influence we talked about this it influences you know the way that you laugh maybe you laugh like your mother or your father or it influences you know whether you have a tendency to to have this vice and or this vice you know some people are attracted to the bottle and some of them are attracted to uh, uh, television or whatever we have different different tendencies but we are not just like the animals in that the animals are all kind of driven by their instinct. But we have free will. We can go beyond what our body's programming is. We might have a tendency to act a certain way, but we can stand up and say, I'm going to decide, I'm going to be different. I'm going to not be stingy like my father, or I'm going to love people like my mother did. And even though we might have a tendency one way or another, we are the sum of our decisions and our experiences, and it goes beyond anything that's in the body. That is kind of the nature of what comes from God. God breathed into us His Spirit, and His Spirit allows us to be more than the bodies that we are built on. 
It's more than our genetics. It's more than our instinct. So where the where the where the body is in concern, we are very much like the animals. Our bodies are very much like the animals because it's made from the earth, just like the animals, just like the land animals was made from the earth. Our bodies are made from the earth. I don't know how God made the bodies. It says he formed them from the ground, but the animals were formed from the ground. So how we got the bodies that we've got, I don't really care. What is inhabiting my body is God's spirit. And it allows my soul to be more than just what my DNA is.